All right then, so right now what we're gonna do is go into arrays and see some array basics. So what is an array? An array is a collection of cells or values that is operated on as a group. So there's two different types of arrays that you should be familiar with. The first one is static. In static arrays, they are sized in the dim statement. Dynamic, they are not sized in the dim statement, but they are resized later with the redim statement and or they're just allocated elsewhere. So I know this really doesn't make sense, so let's look at what the differences between these two actually are. So a static array, you can see here, this is how you define it. And you say my array, and you give it size. So this is one to 10 for a one dimensional array, and we're calling it a double. Now, the second thing is that, well, my array is the array name here, one is the lower bound, 10 is the upper bound. Uh, so the second thing is uh, for dynamic arrays, you dim my array, but you do not give it any size. And you can see that there through the fact that there is not a one to 10 in here. So you're always defining an array whenever you're working with it from like a lower bound to an upper bound. So you can see it up here, this holds 10 elements and you can also give it multiple dimensions. And the way you do that is you just say one to 10 comma one to 10. So dynamic arrays are extremely important. I hardly use static arrays anymore. Uh, so the dim statement is considered sacred in VBA, so everything must be decided beforehand. So if you want your program to decide how many elements you want to have in an array, so it's not predetermined beforehand, it's not always going to be the exact same thing, then you do not want to have a static array. And you can only use variables in place of the array size when you're using dynamic arrays and using the redim statement. So the advantages of a static array, well, it's only one line of code and I don't know, it's, there's not really that many advantage. But dynamic arrays, you can change the size based upon your program. You can use variables in your declaring of it. You can use range pickup, which I'll show you guys later. And it's all over just better. So I'm going to show you guys a quick example of arrays. Better quick program, my array program and we're going to start with a static array we're going to dim my array one to ten and let's make this a integer so it can only hold integers so actually let's just make it one to four so i don't have to type that much so when we start looking at this in the locals window you can see again kind of the collections how it wasn't given size before but once we hit the dim statement you can see here, everything's empty as a zero, and everything is an integer. But what happens if we change this to string? How would that affect the starting value? This will then change to double quotes. So this is what like a string variable is. So basically, this is like a bunch of er variables grouped together. Now, the way you can fill an array is you actually put integers in there or natural numbers or whatever your barriers are in, in defining it. They'd have to be integers. Uh, let's just fill this in with some values. And we'll have to also change this to two, three, four. Alrighty then. So looking at this, you can see it's filling in. And these are all strings because I forgot to change this to integer. So there you have it, how they fill in going through each line of code. Now, to make this a multi-dimensional array, you can put a comma in there and they are like this. So now this turns out to be like a table. Now, the way I have it right here will not work. So it comes up with the wrong number of dimensions error. So the way you do that is you have to give it size in different areas. So going to my array, now you can see there are two elements within everything. And filling this in, you start with the first number and then the second number says exactly what they are here. And it follows just as so. 
three dimensions look like. I don't use this very often, but mostly two dimensional, but you should know. Keep making that error. There you have it. So think of arrays as like giant boxes in a way on like a length and width and then sometimes you'll want to use height. I don't suggest using arrays. I mean getting to three dimensions is pretty complicated. I hardly ever used them. I can only remember one instance that I actually did. But uh, let's go over some dynamic arrays real quick. So right now we have my array, which is dynamically declared in the dem statement, and x. And let's just make x an integer. So let's say x, we're going to say we're going to make this a 5. Well, let's say we want to redem my array 1, 2, 5, and we're going to make it 1, 2, 2. This is really important here. Uh, in the sense that we can have this array here declared, but this still has like kind of like a static sense to it. What if we wanted to use this variable x here that we got from somewhere else anywhere in this program? We can do that by just dropping it in right there. So you can see, same exact thing. It's still a one by two dimensional array and you can still fill it as you normally would.